Good day everyone, I am Ella Marie Lipura. My topic is about Human Associative Learning by Herman Ebbinghaus. Before that, let me explain first who is Herman Ebbinghaus. Herman Ebbinghaus was born January 24, 1850 in Barmen, Rhine Province, Kingdom of Prussia, and he died on February 26, 1909 in Halle, German Empire in the age of 59. Hermann Ebbinghaus was a German psychologist who pioneered the experimental study of memory and is known for his discovery of the forgetting curve and the spacing effect. He was also the first person to describe the learning curve. He was the father of the Neocantia philosopher Julius Ebbinghaus. He became the first psychologist to systematically study learning and memory by carrying out a long a hosting experiment on himself. And now let's proceed in human associative learning. Gustav Fechner's Elements of Psychophysics drew Hermann Ebbinghaus to psychology, which interested him because of its philosophical and scientific views. Um, his independent studies and memory experiments began in 1878, which led him to publish his groundbreaking book that we called On Memory in 1885, where Ebbinghaus popularized the forgetting curve. Ebbinghaus forgetting curve describes the decrease in ability of the brain to retain memory over time. The issue was hypothesized by Hermann Ebbinghaus in 1888, which is why it's called Ebbinghaus forgetting curve. The theory is that you must start losing the memory of learned knowledge over time. In a matter of days or weeks, unless the learned knowledge is consciously reviewed time and again, a related concept to the forgetting curves is strength of memory, which states that the time period up to which a person can recall any memory is based on the strength of the particular memory. Ebbinghaus was determined to show that higher mental processes could actually be studied using experimentation which was in opposition to the popularly, popularly held thought of the time. Um, to control for most potentially confounding variables, Ebbinghaus wanted to use simple acoustic encoding and maintenance rehearsal for which a list of words could have been used. So, as learning would be affected by prior knowledge and understanding, he, ne he needed something that could be easily memorized but which had no prior cognitive associations. Easily formable associations with regular words would interfere with his results. So, he used items that would later be called nonsense syllables, also known as the CVC trigram. Ang CVC trigram is ito na yung three-letter word or non-word composed of, of a consonant in that order. It is um, any three-letter combination, particularly a nonsense syllable used in studies of learning and memory. A nonsense syllable is a consonant-vowel consonant combination where the consonant does not repeat and the syllable does not have prior meaning. The syllables such as DAX, BOK, and YAT would all be acceptable, though Ebbinghaus left no examples. After eliminating the meaning laden syllables, um, Ebbinghaus ended up with 2,300 resultant syllables. Once he had created his collection of syllables, he would pull out a number of random syllables from a box and then write them down in a notebook. Then, to the regular sound of a metronome and with the same voice inflection, he would read out the syllables and attempt to recall them at the end of the procedure. Um, one investigation alone required 15,000 recitations. When looking at his results for evidence of forgetting, Ebbinghaus found, unsurprisingly, that he tended to forget less quickly the list that he had spent the most time memorizing and that recall is best performed immediately after learning. Therefore, there are several limitations to his work on memory. The most important one was that Ebbinghaus was the only subject in his study. 
This limited the study's generalizability to the population. Although, he attempted to regulate his daily routine to maintain more control over his results, his decision to avoid the use of participants sacrificed the external validity of the study despite sound internal validity. In addition, although he tried to account for his personal influences, there is an inherent bias when someone serves as researcher as well as participant. Also, Ebbinghaus memory research halted research in other. More complex matters of memory such as semantic and procedural memory and mnemonics. So, Herman Ebbinghaus hypothesized that the speed of forgetting depends on a number of factors such as the difficulty of the learned material for example, how meaningful it is and its representation and other sociological factors such as stress and sleep.